به مردم شریف ایران من شهریار افشار هستم میزبان شما در برنامه پالیتیکس 365 خوش اومدید به یه برنامه جدید که برای شما تهیه کردیم امروز امروز یه شخصیت برجسته سیاست بین المللی به حضور شما میرسونیم آقای جولیس گویو سفیر سابق لهستان به ایران ایشون یه تجربه خیلی جالبی دارن در این زمینه و حتما در برنامه پالیتیکس 365 میخواستیم تجربه های ایشون رو به نظر شما برسونیم ازشون سوال کنیم برداشت ایشون در این مورد های این موضوع جدیدی که در ایران پیش اومده چیه و تجربه شون در ایران چی بوده و چه امیدی میبینن به آینده ایران آقای سفیر جولیس بایا خوش اومدین به برنامه ما میدونم فارسی صحبت میکنین اما این برنامه به انگلیسی یه ذره ترجمه میکنیم اما هر چقدر میخواستین فارسی صحبت کنیم مطمئنم شنمندگان خوشحال میشن صداتون رو بشنمن خوش اومدین سلام خیلی خیلی خوش خلام که در این برنامه هستم من ترجیح میدم که به انگلیسی صحبت کنم این یعنی زبان فارسی خیلی خیلی خوبه ولی ساخته مسئله نیست مسئله نیست اینکه راحتین we can stick to English and I'll just translate the audio sometimes goes down a little bit so if you could make sure the audio is up uh, that would be helpful but okay. sometimes the audio goes is down it, is it okay now? الان نیست okay yes okay yes I think mm-hmm. so بفهم so uh, if you could give us a little bit about your background uh, How did you end in end up in the Ministry uh, of uh, Foreign Affairs for Poland, Lahistan, Bogolo Shoman Nesfe Jahan? How did you kind of enter into politics, and then we'll get to your time in Iran? Uh, well, I joined the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Poland in uh, 1992, um, and. Previously, I studied uh, um, the history of uh, of the Middle East in general. Uh, but then, with time, I fell in love with Iran uh, much more, and uh, I was responsible for uh, bilateral relations between some countries of the Middle East plus Iran uh, for quite a long period of time. And then, in uh, In 2010, I, I was nominated to ambassador, Polish ambassador to, to Iran, and I spent there seven years till 2017, which gives me probably one of the longest uh, <laughs> um, uh, periods of being ambassador exactly in Iran. Thank you so much for the explanation. So, Ishuna, as a اصطلاع پونت شدن سفیر لهستان به ایران یه هفت سال ایشون در ایران تشریف داشتن نظر سفیر uh, be, I, I would, I'm very curious as to what your experience was like dealing with the Iranian government I mean obviously Poland is a very forward thinking country uh, you know um, a member of NATO I mean uh, you know there, there are, what, what, what is your perspective well, I'm, I'm curious as to how You were reconciling, kind of representing the country that you represent and dealing with the country that you were assigned to. So, so I'm saying that if you look at the Afghanistan, I'm saying that the country that is very much in the middle of the NATO, and by the country that is not a democracy or is not a visible democracy, how do these two things work together? These two countries. Well, this is uh, this is not very difficult, I must say. Why? Because uh, mm, there is a very uh, specific uh, perspective of Poles uh, viewing Iranians and vice versa. Uh, first of all, this is a very long story, history of uh, political uh, relations. Uh, then uh, what is interesting that even after the changes, whatever the changes were, either in Poland or in, in Iran, the spirit of um, a friendly attitude, a very friendly approach was always um, preserved. 
And for this reason, uh, even being, let's say, within the community of uh, such uh, so so called West, let's say, or uh, having been uh, also in the in the NATO uh, in the European Union, it was never difficult for us for Poles. Uh, to feel very close to Iran and Iranians. Of course, governments governments are, are changing, political systems are changing, but there is a very strong feeling, I believe, on both sides, Iranians and, and Poles, uh, that there are some special relations, uh, which is especially important because uh, during Second World War, there was a huge, massive uh, group of Polish um, they were not exactly refugees, but to some extent, they were refugees who were deported by the Soviets from Poland. And then they were allowed to come uh, to Iran. Uh, so uh, this is how both nations uh, became much closer than I would say any other two nations from uh, respectively this part of the world where Iran is and uh, from, uh, from Europe. Thank you. Uh, Let me translate real quick. Uh, thank you so much for that explanation. Ishun Fawadan ke wagan mardom Lahistan va Iran ye sabqe khali amir o chandin sal va hamir daran az moghe jang jani do bom ke melati bestala mahajer shodan be in keshvara khlasa ishun ye ehsas khali nazdiki ehsas mikone va mardom Lahistan ehsas nazdiki ehsas mikone va mardom Iran. البته دولت ها ممکنه عقیده های متفاوت داشته باشن اما از نظر اجتماعی مردم لاستان و مردم ایران همیشه خیلی نسبت نزدیکی داشته باشن Thank you for that background I think that's good to know I don't know if everybody knows that especially the younger generation that doesn't know world history uh, as you do uh, So fast forward to we have the history of Poland and, and Iran So now you know uh, during your seven years there uh, what were some challenges? What were some difficult? What were some milestones, moments that you remember as either ch challenging or wonderful? I mean, good or bad. Uh, but, but let me just translate it quickly. So I'll indicate between half salic issue and safi budan. So last so I could be a bad, but for time you are an ke alan mitonan dan yung kora. I'm up. The sound went down again. Sorry. No. Matt, can you hear me? Now I can hear you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I can say that uh, I can confess that during these seven years, there was almost nothing wrong, nothing bad, no, no bad experience. There were some difficult moments, but uh, even though uh, probably the, 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 the most difficult period was when Poland was uh, presiding the European Union, there is no uh, there is no um, permanent uh, representation in Tehran of the European Union, so Poland was, uh, you know, playing playing role of a, a union European Union embassy, and had to uh, act according to some specific regulations and specific instructions, especially about human rights, for example. So uh, there were some difficult discussions, of course, uh, in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of of Iran. Um, there were a very difficult moment when in, in November 2011, uh, protesters, uh, a crowd uh, broke into the British embassy. That was during our uh, Polish presidency. And we had to uh, interact between uh, Great Britain, uh, that time, Great Britain was still a member of the European Union and the, the, the Iranian authorities. But even in these difficult situations, uh, it was always very, very much, let's say, uh, correct and uh, as much friendly as possible. Thank you. So let me translate real quick. So, two and a half study case, Safir Budan, Tom Jekka, Ishun Bechater Miaran, Hamechi, Nasbatan. Uh, روابط مثبتی بود با دولت ایران uh, اما خب یه لحظه های سختی بود که از نظر دیپلماتی uh, و سیاسی که ایشون بعد یه و روابط یه ذره خب بگم سختتر شد مخصوصا موقعی که لهستان uh, uh, ریاست 
اروپیان یونیون دستش به دست داشتن و نماینده اروپا بودن در اصل در ایران و وقتی که چند, چند نفر در سفارت به به سفارت انگلیس حمله کردن در سال 2011 ایشون باید در نظر یه واسطه یه نماینده به اصطلاح خوب حق مطمئنا گفتگوهای سیاسی با مقامات داشت که بین انگلیس و ایران که لحظات سختی بود در اون هفت سال بالاخره باید یه موضوعی در میون میشد به علاوه این موضوع حقوق بشر هم پیش اومد در این طی زمانی که ایشون سفیر بودن و بایدتا هرچی که دولت لهستان به ایشون فرمودن ایشون اون پیاما رو به دولت ایران رسوندن اوورال این جنرال نه ایم انشن هیومن رایت وید ایز پولند ستانس on human rights and what's going on in Iran today, officially. I know you're not an official government spokesman anymore, but but just from your uh, now private citizenship and your history, what is Poland's view? Let me just translate. So, I think that the situation in the United States in the past few months is the most important thing in the United Of course, the, the, uh, the Polish government uh, as a... Uh, as a government of a country being in the European Union uh, has uh, a general approaches in the European Union. Uh, however, also taking into consideration our, let's say, special relations with Iran. They are special. Uh, there, are some, there are some, let's say, um, more detailed uh, and more complex uh, approaches uh, still, it doesn't mean that uh, you know we we approve what's going on in Iran. Uh, most of people, uh, not only politicians, are very much with what is going on in Iran uh, with Iranians. Uh, there is a small uh, Iranian diaspora in Poland, and uh, I know some some people. Uh, from this diaspora, and uh, they are telling me that Poles are very, very supportive for uh, for what's going on. I mean, with the with the protesters, and they do understand what does it mean to be under a yoke of, you know, um, let's say forces that we have not chosen. Uh, uh, this is also our past, and this is this is also why we understand Iranians very well, in my opinion. Thank you, thank you. So, Ishan Fawadanke. خب البته چند نفر نمیدونم تعدادش چقدر ایرانی ها در لهستان زندگی میکنن و به نماینده هاشون حتما اعتراضاتی کردن در مورد این حقوق بشر اما رو هم رفته لهستان و ایران روابطش مثبته اما خب دلیل نمیشه که سیاست مدارا هنوز اعتراض نمیکنن به حوادثی که پیش اومده و رو هم رفته از نظر سیاسی هیچ سیاست مداری قبول نداره هیچ سرکوبی که با یه ملت دموکرات خواه ممکنه پیش بیاد پس رو هم رفته بعض وقتا این موضوع خیلی موضوع پیچیده یه واسه اینکه یه لحاظ دولت ها با همدیگه روابط دارن اما خب مردم هم با همدیگه نزدیک هن و هیچ کسی هم یه دولتی که به سال دموکراسی قبول نداره و ممکنه سرکوبی ملت رو اجرا میکنه مثبت قبول نمیکنه به دل دولت uh, it's hard to translate some of these things i'm sorry uh, but uh, because it's a complicated political issue yeah 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 uh, right no, but uh, in, in some respects like you say the people of poland and, and iran are, are close and the governments wish to keep cordial relationships but at the same time you know uh, uh, poland and, and even the european union is observing what's going on and the european union is made many overtures, yes. uh, made many statements officially, uh, which is better from a political standpoint when the European Union says something as opposed to individual countries, right? There is a certain unity there, uh, obviously, that's conveyed. So uh, instead of picking on one country to make a stand against another country, uh, the European Union speaking as a collective uh, is more impactful, uh, I think. Sure. So see, mention the European Union, I mean, um, They've made statements looking into the future. I mean, how do you see this issue evolve? Uh, I mean, the, the other countries in the Middle East have had popular uprisings and democratic uprisings, and they've all 
had different outcomes. Uh, I'm curious as to, from your position, your history, and, and maybe what you've seen from political circles in the European Union, what does the future look like? And let me just translate real quickly. So I think that نظری چون در مورد آینده این تظاهرات چیه مخصوصا از از طرف کمیسیون اروپا واقعا آی تی چیه نظر سیاسی چیه گو هد ثانک یو ول ایتس ویری دیفیکلت تو پردیکت سو اند یوزلی دی جاب اف انالیست از نات تو پردیکت بات تو گیو Uh, let's say most probable and less probable uh, scenarios. Uh, in my opinion, the most probable scenario uh, would be rather some sort of evolution. Um, of course, I can be completely wrong, but uh, this is how I see what's going on right now in, in Iran. Uh, there is, uh, of course, there are protests. There is a lot of uh, energy among the people who want to change their life. But also I can see some sort of, let's say, um, flexibility from uh, those who are ruling. Because uh, of course this, this flexibility doesn't come as a, you know, uh, something obvious. It has been, uh, it has been uh, uh, won by the protesters. Uh, so I can see the different groups of, uh, let's say, people opposing. I wouldn't say opposition because I don't see any uh, consolidated united front of, of those who are against the regime in Tehran. Uh, I would say there, there is a, a, a different, there are different groups, a whole plethora of views. Um, But what is, what is, in my opinion, very, very important that uh, these people who are also meeting abroad, uh, they are discussing. There is also discussion inside Iran, as we can see uh, last proposals by some politicians and comments by the ruling, uh, ruling uh, authorities uh, about the referendum, about a new constitution. In general, all of that shows, uh, in my opinion, that we are going into some evolution of the system, most probably, and the whole society. Uh, this is the, the most important, the society is evolving. So uh, shortly, what will be the final result? Difficult to say because we have to say also when, and this is impossible to say. Right, thank you. Uh, I'm not gonna try to translate every word, uh, but I will say, uh, 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 I will translate roughly. Um, خب موضوع موضوع یه خیلی پیچیده سیاسی هستش ایشون نظرشون اینه که حالا انقلاب هم نشه یه جوری سیستم سیاسی ایران ترقی میکنه رشد میکنه به جهتی که مردم بخوان پیش بینی اصطلاح ایشون اینه و یه جوری هم خب میشه دید که حکومت داره نشون میده که مایل هست که یه جوری که با ملت کنار بیاد حالا چه جوری و چه فرمی اون میگیره واقعا پیش بینیش سخته اما این انرژی که ملت ایران نشون دادن قاعدتا نظر ایشون اینه که به یه نتیجه میرسه حالا چه نتیجه ای هست سخت پیش بینیش you know in the two three minutes we have left uh, uh, Juliet I really would like to know your your personal kind of feelings I mean um, did you have a per- I'm just going to switch from politics to food to culture. What was your favorite experience in Iran? Like, did you have a favorite place to go? Did you have a favorite memory from your time there? Yes. Uh, well, my my probably my best uh, best experience was from Yazd. Yes. Uh, during Ashura, I went there during Ashura, and it was absolutely marvelous. It's a little bit different than Ashura in Tehran. But right. I was also participating every year with my camera. Mm. Uh, but they asked, yes, they asked. Uh, as to food, gourmet um, sabzi, uh, I think this is the best, <laughs> <laughs> the best thing that That's I. That's a favorite I, of I, many, I, by the way. That's an international favorite of many. Uh, so you're in good company, I think. Y- yes, but many people say that uh, fasenjun is better. I That's would, uh, <laughs> I would say that gourmet sabzi is much better. 
right. and of course with Tadik. Right? Tadik, of course, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, nice. Top of the top. Yeah. Did you, uh, for, so yeah, I don't want to create another political conflict. Professor and June Gomez Abzi, those are very deep <laughs> political uh, disputes, uh, global disputes. But uh, was there a favorite place or restaurant or, or a corner? I mean, uh, a lot of people like that band. A lot of people like. I'm just curious where do where do ambassadors go for fun in in Iran? Fun. <laughs> if, well, if you, uh, I can call it fun. I'm not saying it might not be fun. Uh, uh, Darband was was Darband nice. Was yes, right. yeah. I I did like it, and I was I was uh, very often there whenever it was nice. uh, good weather. Uh, but also, I was uh, I I did like to go to Bandarabas. Bandarabas. Uh, this is not sure. obvious. Sure. This is not obvious, uh, but uh, fresh. Uh, right. This is it is the island, right? Of Kashmir is, is something very sp special and uh, it's not very well uh, explored by right. the others. So I did like the place. And uh, also Mazandaran as general. Yeah. Mazandaran was, was a great uh, place. Yeah. Well, you named all yes. the, I think you, I think you named all of the favorite places that Iranians think of and the favorite foods that Iranians think of. Um, I'm so glad we had this time together. I'm so glad that uh, someone as as experienced and uh, I think uh, empathic and someone that that's I think has a kind heart uh, is was an ambassador of of Poland to Iran. Uh, however, which way uh, people don't like what the government is doing and not doing, I think diplomatic relationships are very very important to building a future uh, for for the Iranian people. So uh, thank you so much, Ambassador Julius Goyo, for joining us. یک دنیا تشکر امیدوارم حتما ما با هم دیگه دوباره ملاقات کنیم در یه فرصتی و به برنامه ما برگردیم خیلی ممنون خیلی ممنونم مرسی